morning everybody. As we begin worship, our mini choir, our singers, will sing for us a, an introit, a short song to bring us all into a place of worship. And after that, we'll go into a prayer to be in your presence. continue in quiet prayer, a prayer with words and response. Our response at the end of each section picks up the refrain of our song. We say together, this is my desire. But we also share with images to help us focus our worship both for those here in the church and those who are worshipping at home. So let's pray. To worship in stillness, to know God, in the heart of my being, this is my desire. To close my ears and eyes to distraction, be still and know that you are God, this is my desire. To shout out loud, because my heart is full of God, this is my desire. To raise my hands and, and dance for you, this is my desire. to paint all the colours of the rainbow with joy in your creation. This is my desire. To sing and play and make a new sound for you. This is my desire. To laugh with tears of joy, to weep with all my pain, this is my desire. Our singers lead us again with an old hymn, one we haven't sung for some time, but in preparing this service and thinking about our topic of prayer, I find myself drawn back to some, some of the older hymns which seem to get to the heart of this. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, uttered or unexpressed. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, uttered or Trembles in the breast. Pray 
a change of pace, our family ministry time with Sharon. Hi everyone. Yes, Buster, I'm going to tell everyone this is Buster. Yes, and Buster's going to help me to tell everybody about today's theme. You have striped ones, but you quite like flowery ones. Um, I'm not sure that you've got the right idea, Buster, about what we're talking about today. Curtains. Buster, we're talking about a word called certain or uncertainty. You thought it was to do with curtains. Yes, I can see that, but it's not to do with curtains, no. It's to do with a word called uncertainty. No, uncertainty isn't a thing that can be flowery. Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody what uncertainty is. If you just give me a minute to try and tell everybody. Come here, come here. Right, so uncertainty is when things happen in our lives and we don't really know what the outcome is going to be. So, of course, the coronavirus is a perfect example. Yeah, I know, I didn't really like lockdown either. Very happy that we're coming out of it, yes. But it's all full of uncertainty, isn't it? We don't quite know. And we're not always sure if the things that are rules about masks and social distancing and who we can see and whether it's all going to change. You're right, Buster. But with God, there is certainty. So, Buster, how can we help with feeling uncertain, though, I wonder? Um... Yeah, we could talk to God. That's a really good idea. And there is something happening this week called Thy Kingdom Come. And it's all about prayer. And here's our Thy Kingdom Come prayer map. And inside are lots of different activities that you can do. Let me show you. Lots of activities. Yeah, thank you, Buster. But what's brilliant about it too, is you can use it on your phone. So you can download an app onto your mobile phone. You need a grown up to help with this. And then every day through the week of Thy Kingdom Come, you can play the games to help you with prayer. Now, by the time you watch this video, it may already be part of the way through the week. But the wonderful thing is you can use the map and the games on the phone at any time. Can we play one now? I suppose we could, couldn't we? We could do today's game. How about that? 
You're looking forward to it. Yes, me too. And then we could look at the other puzzle bit that's on here and see what we can do too. Yep, yep, yep. All right, okay, all right. He's very keen. Why don't you keep watching and you can see just what happens when Buster and I play today's game on the app for Thy Kingdom Come. Cheeky pandas, cheeky pandas. Not just sure if we got cut off there or not, but look up thy kingdom come. We'll be talking more about that in a moment. Big thank you to Ellie, who's going to read for us. Just a short introduction to say our reading today from John's Gospel is part of a long prayer from, from Jesus. I, I can't imagine that the thing was actually recorded word for word at the time. You'd have needed a voice recorder to do that, but it's an attempt to write down in the Gospel about how Jesus prayed, and it's all about his relationship with his Father. So we hear Jesus in prayer with his father, and Ellie reads for us. Thank you very much, Ellie. My reading is John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and the belief that you sent me. I pray for them, I am not praying for the world. For those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. <coughs> They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Amen. Thank you. Our singers once again with a beautiful contemporary song about prayer and our deeper relationship with God from a wonderful writer called Bernadette Farrell. Oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. God, 
of my present, my past and future too. Although your spirit is upon me, still I search for shelter from your night. There is no one where on earth I can <coughs> escape you. Even the darkness is radiant in your sight. And a little bit of good news in the life of our church this week. We've got a baptism booked for the autumn. It's been a long time since we've been able to have a baptism. And uh, it's some of the family we already know and, and absolutely delighted. And it, it came as a wonderful sign of, uh, you know, of life returning uh, to us, that here would be something we will be able to look forward to celebrating. It's been a little while since we've been able to do that. It's been also really rather a long time since we've had a wedding in this church and we haven't got any lined up at all at the moment. And, and weddings have been rather on my mind in the last week or so, d despite their obvious absence from our church life in recent times for obvious reasons. But the thing why they, they've been on uh, my mind is I have an odd little task to do tomorrow to do with weddings. I have to go into the church safe and take out our current wedding registers and close them, put a line through everything, and take them to the registrar along with our book of wedding certificates, which looks like a big checkbook from which you take the wedding certificates. We will no longer be registering marriages in churches. We still have marriages, but they've modernised and streamlined the process and no longer will we actually keep a wedding register in the church. The records will all be kept by the registrar. We'll still celebrate marriages, we'll still sign a paper at the end of the marriage, but everything will go off to the registrar who will look after the certificates and all that kind of thing. And of course it'll all go digital, won't it? Well, you can decide for yourself how well that will work. Uh, but in reality, it's a sensible change. Uh, it's always a bit of a problem getting those registers just right and it is a terribly, terribly, terribly archaic system. They've also tidied up some things that were long overdue for tidying up. Uh, traditional marriage registers record the father of the bride and the groom but no other information about the family and now it'll be much more flexible because some people have, you know, a, a stepfather and stepmother. Families are more complicated and mother's names can be recorded. And they've also changed the really, really archaic thing where we would write down the rank or profession of the people involved, you know, like it was gentleman or labourer. Uh, and it, it goes back to a time when that's what you were. Uh, and now we're just going to record occupation, which makes far more sense in, in modern life. So these are, these are sensible changes for who we are as a society now and how we record things. But I feel a certain sense of wistfulness uh, about it. I've been a, a, an authorised person to register marriages since I was 25 years old, well, off and on with a few gaps in chaplaincy work. So I've been filling in wedding registers all that time, and generations of clergy and ministers before me for hundreds of years have filled in marriage records by hand, with a pen, with proper ink, no by roll, that won't do because it fades. It has to be a real proper pen and you really need a dip pen rather than a fountain pen to use the ink we have to use. So it's a very ancient, historic thing and I feel a certain sense of loss of a long tradition even though I know it makes sense to make these changes. There are other changes coming up in, in marriage law which are not yet here but are, are recommended and likely to happen. Um, the most important is that people will in the future be able to get married anywhere they want. 
At the moment, it has to be in a registered church or a registered building, you know, like the hotels and various venues that there are, and it must be indoors. You can't get married outdoors at the present time. They're going to strip that away, and you'll be able to get married in your back garden or your front room or in a balloon or anywhere that you, that you want. And more and more, it will become something that's very individual to the people involved, rather than something where pretty much all of us do and say pretty much the same thing when we get married. The words we use in a marriage service are now stripped down to the very bare minimum in the promises that people make. All you have to say is I, X, X, take you, Y, Y, to be my wife or husband. That's it. Those are the contracting words. Now, for those of us here who are married or have been married, we probably made a rather longer promise than that, and we probably all made pretty much the same one. You know, the stuff about sickness and health and richer and, and poorer, and with all my worldly goods I thee and die, if you go back to a, a very traditional form, and until death does do part in those, or, or modern versions of those, of those words. Now, the reason for this long rambling preamble it's partly because it's on my mind, and partly because when I was looking at this, to me, quite difficult reading today, this rather long, convoluted, and not all that poetic prayer of Jesus, trying to find how we could find a simple heart in it, how we could focus down on it, the words that really came to me is when Jesus says to his Father, all that I have is yours and all that you have is, is mine. And he struck me that that's very much like the promises that we have made in, in what marriage, isn't it? it, it it's very much similar to, to the traditional words that we have said in, in marriage. So the heart of Jesus' prayer to his Father is him offering and promising to give himself wholly and forever to his Father. And God his Father offering to give God's self wholly and forever to Jesus, his son. And the, the nearest thing I can think of in the experience of most of us, and of course not all of us have been married, and some of us have had experiences of marriage which have been very difficult, I do recognise that. But the nearest thing I could find in our experience is that it's rather like the commitment of a marriage. A whole giving of self and a whole receiving of another. Now, when we think about prayer, we usually start from a place where prayer is about asking God for stuff. We know that's not the whole of it, but we usually start from that place, and then we go on to other kinds of prayer where we give praise to God, or maybe the prayer where we can just be in your presence and that lovely little song with which we started. At the heart of Jesus' prayer isn't about the asking, it's about the giving of whole self and receiving of God's self. It's about a covenant and a union and a being together. Not the real heart, the deep heart, the beating heart of what prayer is. Uh, Sharon mentioned in her video that we're in a, a period of time when there's a little project running, it runs each year, called Thy Kingdom Come. We haven't made a big thing out of it this year because circumstances are also very peculiar this year. But from Ascension Day, which was Thursday, to Pentecost, which is next Sunday, for the last few years, there's been an initiative to call us so a more intense period of prayer. It started with the archbishops in the Anglican Church, but other churches have become involved in it. And the, the badge, the title that's given is, is Thy Kingdom Come. We'll, we'll, we'll see the logo in a little while. We've got a piece of video from them to, to, to look at. A, a period of, of intensive prayer in which we can find time to offer ourselves and to receive from God. Let me just grab my notes for a minute because I've got a quote here that I can't quite manage from, from memory. It, it, it comes from centuries and centuries ago from a, a wonderful man called Augustine, who was a bishop in North Africa. We sometimes forget that Africa is now a world center of Christianity, but it was in the early Christian days too. It was a center of 
Christian faith, and uh, Augustine was a bishop in North Africa many, many centuries ago. And he wrote powerfully and wonderfully about prayer. And here's one of the pithy things that he said. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. You've made us for yourself, and our hearts won't be at rest till they rest in you. That's the prayer about all that I have is yours. I give wholly of myself. And all that you are is mine. God gives wholly of God's self. A little bit like our covenant prayer, isn't it? Where we offer ourselves wholly to God and seek to receive wholly from God. Prayer as a covenant, as an act of eternal commitment one to the other. We're going to share in another of those traditional hymns, but as a prayer this time. I think it's actually printed on the sheet if you're in the church and have got that available, but I think the words will also come up on the screen. In some ways, it's quite a sentimental hymn. And then you look more closely and you realise that it's actually about that whole self-offering of which I've been speaking. And it takes us on the journey from a place where we don't really want to give of ourselves to God to a place where we feel able to give wholly of ourselves to God and to receive wholly of God. The last line of each verse is, is a repeat uh, and we say it the second time together. Let's pray. Oh, the bitter shame and sorrow that a time could ever be when I let the Saviour's pity plead in vain and proudly answered, all of self and none of thee, all of self and none of thee. Yet he found me, I beheld him bleeding on the cursed tree, heard him pray, forgive them, Father, and my wistful heart said faintly, some of self and some of thee, some of self, and some of thee. Day by day his tender mercy, healing, helping, full and free, sweet and strong, and are so patient, brought me lower while I whispered, less of self and more of thee, less of self and more of thee. Higher than the highest heavens, deeper than the deepest sea. Lord, thy love at, at last hath conquered. Grant me now my heart's petition, none of self and all of thee. None of self and all of thee. I sing as leaders again. I've never sung this hymn, though it does go to a tune that you may very well recognize. Listening God, you hear us when we cannot speak. Show us love to 
So to help us look another way at prayer, a little bit of video material from the Thy Kingdom Come initiative. It's all about prayer as praise, about offering ourselves as, as joy to, to God. And it's in, a, it's in a kind of rhyme, really intended with younger people in mind, but I think it's a great little piece of film to help us focus at this point. From Thy Kingdom Come. Hi. I'm Pippa, a Catholic missionary in the UK. I hope that wherever you are, that you're doing okay. I've been asked by Thy Kingdom Come to speak on praise, a funny topic to raise right now, you might think. After the year we've had, surely we want to shrink in on ourselves and say, leave me alone. What's been good, really, you might say with a groan. Well, if you stick with me just two minutes, I'll give you some nuggets on reasons to praise. So join with me. Let's elevate our gaze. When I was younger, I thought it quite odd that the Father, the Son, the Spirit, all God, would call us to worship them, to give them our praise. Why would they need it? Why are they phased about some humans on earth lifting a song? My mind couldn't grasp why we'd add to the throng. Now looking back, I see I got mixed up. There's a difference between a need and a love. You see, God doesn't need me. Before I was born, the Trinity's love was so perfect, so adorned in happiness and hope, they needed nothing more. But God as a father had more in store. He didn't just want angels above singing, holy, 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 God, you are love. He wanted a family, children to be in relationship with him, to join in their company. This is the heart of all praise and worship. I can honestly say I love it to bits. That I get to share and lift my voice. God knows me best and he's given me a choice. Yes, God doesn't need my praise and applause, but his existence, his goodness, his mercy, it draws me into life in its fullness. And that's why I praise. It's an act of the will. God offered me life and he offers it still. It's never a must but always a can. I get to share life with the almighty I am. So today, why not think about the generosity of God? Think about the fact that your praise is enough. He longs for it, but not because he's insecure. It's for our benefit. Of that, I am sure. Praise helps me live for more than just me. As St. Paul says, what do you have that you didn't receive? So we join in prayer. This time it is our prayer of asking, our prayer of intercession. As well as being the week with Ascension Day in it and uh, marking Thy Kingdom Come, a period of prayer, this is also Christian Aid Week. The themes in Christian Aid Week this year are about water and our care for the planet. So our prayers for others will reflect that. We pick up some of Jesus' words in the response to our prayers when I say, God says, we all answer, all I have is yours, as we hear God giving of himself to us as we offer our prayers to God. Let's pray. Lord God, you give yourself wholly to us. And yet we are hesitant in giving of ourselves to you. So may this prayer be part of our journey of self-offering. Our journey of knowing you and being ever close to you. So as we pray, we pray for ourselves and that we might be changed. God says... All I have is yours. 
in this time of prayer encouraged by thy kingdom come we are asked and invited to pray for a handful of people five people or so whom we long to know God better whom we believe and feel are ready to come closer to God to meet and to know Jesus so spend a little time in this quiet and just in your minds and your hearts think of two or three or four or five people you know for whom this is a time in which you long for them to come nearer to the heart of God God says all I have is yours as we mark Christian Aid Week in a time and days when we are only too aware of the trauma and the pain and the fraction of the world we think of all the broken places the terrible violence in Israel Palestine of the pandemic as it rages especially in India we're asked by Christian aid to reflect on the breaking the damage to our world to our planet and the part we all play in that and to remember and think of those whom it affects already in their daily lives to pray for those for whom the quest for clean water in times of dryness and changing climate has become their daily occupation for those who must carry the one or two buckets of water they have for the day and fetch them miles to their home we pray for them and for all who work with them to bring clean refreshing life giving water to all remembering that Jesus gives himself to us as the life giving water God says all I have is yours we pray for our church and our friends in partner churches as we move forward into more open times for the groups who are returning to meet within our church life groups of young people groups of people in need groups who build community we give thanks for this space and all it ministers to we give thanks for that community wakening up like spring following winter God says all I have is yours we think of this church family and its needs and its hurts and its pain we think of our, our, our losses and sorrows we pray too in thanks for our joys for the gifts of new life new children in the life of our church we pray for our work with children and young people for the renewal of our vision as we move forward in these exciting days of new openness and if ever we feel that we lack that we are short that we don't have enough God says all I have is yours let's say the Lord's Prayer together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever 
Amen. What hymn could we ask of our singers as we draw our worship together and to a close? Well, it could only be what a friend we have in Jesus, that wonderful hymn of prayer. Two little reminders as we bring our service to a close. Firstly, there will be a Zoom service at five o'clock this afternoon. The contact details are in the notices and the magazine in the usual place. The Zoom service will focus on the theme of Ascension Day, which was on Thursday. Next Sunday is Pentecost, one of the three big days in the Christian year, Christmas, Easter and Pentecost. And we will be sharing in Holy Communion for the first time in quite a few weeks. The details about that went out with the notices and they'll be repeated again in next week's notices. I'm not going to speak of them now. But a reminder to friends who are worshipping at home, if you're not able to be here in the church, please let either myself or Margaret, our communion steward, know and we will arrange for communion to come from the Sunday service to you so that you can share at home during the course of the week. A closing prayer that comes from Christian Aid as one of their prayers for this Christian Aid week. Let's pray. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon us and on all creation this day and for the future to come. Amen. We say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a fabulous family, family hugs day tomorrow. Forgive me if I'm not at the church door to greet people. I, I go online and talk to people who've been online so that I get a chance uh, for them to see me and me to see them at the end of the service. So I'll pop out to the office and do that. Uh, have a great day, friends.
God bless.